Hello everyone, welcome back to another LiveWire tutorial. Today we will learn how to make a search bar without writing any JavaScript. So let's take a look at our demo before we get started. So we have a search bar here and you can type in whatever you're looking for and our application will go ahead, search the database and return the results here for us without writing any JavaScript. Everything will be using PHP. So let's get started. Okay guys, so I have uh, gone ahead and created an empty Laravel 10 project with a simple HTML template. I'll have the link for the template in the description. I have it in a GitHub gist, so you can just go and copy this and replace it with your welcome.blade file. So I'll just did that. And this is what the template looks like. It's just a simple navigation. And then we have our search bar, obviously uh, by default, the functionality won't work. So we will add that in a second. So let's go ahead and install LiveWire. So I'm going to open up the LiveWire documentation uh, and I'm using LiveWire 3 today. You can still use LiveWire 2. Uh, we are not using any of the LiveWire 3 features, the new features, but I think it's better if we start practicing with LiveWire 3. Now, as of now, LiveWire 3 is in beta. So if you use Composer, require LiveWire, LiveWire, it's going to install version 2 until the stable version of V3 is out. So in order to install version 3, just click on installation and copy this command here. So we are on version 3.0 beta. And so it's safer to actually install it from here. And if there is any differences between LiveWire 3 and 2, I'll mention it in the video as we go along. But for the most part, even if you're using LiveWire 2, you should be able to follow along. So I'm going to paste that in my terminal. It's going to go ahead and install LiveWire 3 for us. It's going to take a few seconds, so it should be super quick. And while this is happening, uh, yep, okay, it's already finished. I clean up the terminal. So one thing you do need to realize if you are using LiveWire 2, in LiveWire 2, you had to manually add the LiveWire CSS and JavaScript in the header and the footer. In LiveWire 3, you no longer need to do that. So they have removed the need for that. So I'm not going to be doing it. So let's go ahead and create our first component. So everything in LiveWire is done through component. And to create a component, just type in PHP artisan make live wire and then the name of your component. So for us, we're going to be building a search bar. So I name it search bar. And it's super quick. So live wire will create two new files for us, uh, a view file with the name of a search bar. And by view, I mean a blade file. And then in under our app directory, live wire, we have a search bar PHP file, which is going to be our main component. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and extract the search bar from our HTML. So this is our navigation. We have a bunch of unnecessary code. I'll put those aside and I'll find our search bar. As you can see, it has the ID search bar. So I'll just copy this or cut this and go in our search bar blade. Now you need to make sure your root HTML element, you only have one root HTML element. So if you have for example, let's say I remove this. This will not be allowed. I mean, your application might still work, but LiveWire requires you to always have only one root element. Right now we have only, we have two. We have the form and we have the div. So everything should be under one div, one HTML element, whatever you want to use, okay? So now that I have saved that, I'll go back and we can see uh, our search bar is gone. So we now need to include our uh, library component in our navigation bar. So I'll go and do that real quick. And it's very easy. You can use the LiveWire directive in Blade and then include the name of your element. Now, one thing you have to realize here is if you have capital letters in your uh, component, you, you have to separate it with using a dash. So I say search bar. And I don't, yeah, okay, everything's correct. I'll go back and I reload and you can see our search bar is displaying. So now let's go and implement our functionality. So what we need to do here is have a way to get whatever user is typing in the search bar. And the way we can do that is by using properties in our components. Okay. And you can define a property by basically defining a public property in your component and I'll name it search. And I give it a default of basically an empty string. And what I want to do is basically anytime the user types something, I want to update this variable in our component, right? And LiveWire makes this very easy to do. And this is done by something called 
uh, property binding. And the way you do that is you find whatever property you want. So for example, our input box, right? I want the whatever is typed in the value of the input box to be binded with my library property of search. So we can easily do that by just typing in wire model and then passing in the name of our uh, property here in our PHP file. So it's search. I type in search. Now, by default in LiveWire 3, if you want for our component to be updated, we need to have some sort of a button. So we need to have some sort of action. If you want it to happen automatically live, you need to add dot live. And what this does is, I'll show you guys in a second. If I come in and I open up our uh, developer tools and I go in security in network and I click fetch XHR, just look at what we have here. Okay, I'm going to start typing in and for every keystroke that I take, LiveWire in the background is taking, is sending an Ajax request. And you know, this is from LiveWire because it basically is showing it here, say LiveWire.js. Okay, you can see that. So once we bind it and we say live, it will automatically send an Ajax request in the background. So we don't need, we don't need to write the JavaScript for this. So if I say test, you can see LiveWire is sending an Ajax request for every keystroke. Okay, so this makes it very easy to send information back and forth between your front end and your back end without any JavaScript, right? LiveWire is handling all of that for us. And every time there is an update to one of our properties, LiveWire actually automatically, very intelligently, tries to refresh this element as well. Similar to what happens, for example, with something like Vue or React, it will actually reload or refresh our search bar. The rest of our application stays static, but this part, the search bar is updated if it was related to our property that was changed, okay? So now that we have learned this, let's try and use this to actually get the search results. So what I can do here, we can do actually something very simple. I say uh, results, I create a variable. It's gonna be an empty array. And what I want to do is if our search property, uh, we can actually do something like str length. So if the length of our search property is bigger than one or equal to one. And I, did I make a mistake? Yep, we need to do this. So if our search property is longer than one character, so if it's empty, we want to return an empty result. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna say results equals, and here I wanna fetch uh, users from our database. So uh, I already have actually gone ahead and created a bunch of fake users in our database so i have over 100 users but if you don't have any users and you want to do your testing you can open up uh, database seeder it comes by default with laravel uncomment this line and then type in how many users you want in the factory and just type in php artisan uh, db seed and this is just a quick way to test and after you have done that, uh, I already had 100. And I, if I reload, I have now over 1,000 users on my database, okay? So we now have some dummy data. So what I can do now is use our user model and I can do a very easy query. I can say where uh, name like, and then do a simple wildcard search. Let's say this dot search. And yeah, just like that. And maybe I can say limited to only seven users is up to you and I get all the results, okay? So if our search is defined and it's longer than one character, uh, get the data from the database. And I can then pass it down to our view file the same way you would do it in your controller. You can use compact, you can use whatever you like. I'm gonna here uh, pass in an array and say users and I'm gonna say results, okay? So very simple. And what will happen is every time the search property is updated using the Ajax request, LiveWire will intelligently try to re-render the page. So it will run this render function again, which means this condition will be true and it's gonna load it from the database. And we can test this out now. So let's go and check it out. I'll reload the page. And well, we, actually, we do need to update our blade file, so I, 
we do need to do that. So what I do is I'll get rid of this one and I'll add a for each loop, which is going to be very easy. And I say users and I'm using users because that's the name I'm passing down to my blade. So I'll say users and then user. I'll quickly go ahead and update this. So instead of name, I'm going to display user.name. This should be very familiar if you guys have worked with Laravel before. And then here I'm going to display the email. Okay. So very simple. And maybe here I can add an if statement because I don't want this div to always be visible. I say size of users if it's more than zero. And if, so now that we have this, we have a condition to display it our, our users is present. We can go and reload the page and do a test. I'll say T and boom, we all automatically get the results. So uh, just to go over what is happening, the exact process, by default, we load our component. Uh, we're going to have an empty search. Liver will run this render function. Obviously, we set it to empty. And then this str length is going to return false because our search is empty and we'll render an empty search bar, right? The moment we type something in, Livewire in the background creates an Ajax request to this update and updates the search property. So after I typed in, this becomes A, right? And Livewire is very smart. It realizes, okay, this property search has been changed. We need to re-render the page and goes ahead and runs this render function again, which as a result, updates our results variable, okay? So our array changes into a collection. It's that simple. And as you can see, we can do nester. I think I saw someone with the name nester. We can do that. Uh, we can do fa. Jones. So yep, yeah, it works just like this, guys. Super easy and simple. I do want to teach you guys one more thing before we leave. And that is uh, by default, the wire model live, it will send a request for every keystroke. So if the user is typing too fast, we're going to send a bunch of unnecessary requests, right? So maybe I want to say James. Do we have a James? Yep. So for a James, I might have sent like three requests as I'm typing it. Okay. Yeah, four requests. So we can actually make it a bit more efficient by using something called debounce that Liver provides. So we can say live dot debounce. And then we provide some time in milliseconds, let's say 500 ms for milliseconds. And what does what this tells Liver to do is wait 500 milliseconds between every Ajax request. So if a user is typing too fast, we won't send like, you know, 100 requests. Okay, so if I type in James quickly, we only get one request. If I type it slowly, we can see it took about 500 milliseconds to send the request. So this prevents, uh, you know, a mini DDoS attack on your server where, you know, users are quickly typing and you're sending, you know, 10, 20 requests per user interaction. And that's it, guys. So without writing any JavaScript, we were able to make an interactive search bar. And so it makes it very easy. If you want to do a very simple interactive element on your website, you no longer need to write any JavaScript or, you know, use something like Vue.js or React. You can just use Livewire and it's going to make it very easy to maintain. You can also write tests for it if you want. I may cover that on a later episode. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And let me know if there is something new you want to learn. Have a great day. Bye.